Good morning, guys. 5 a.m. Importance of that time. It, but it's the importance of the prayer, guys, because this is going to be birthed in prayer. That communication with God, that source being God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Not our, not our way, but His will. So, I was in prayer this morning, and I was praying, and the Lord spoke to me, and He said, Steve, are you ready? I said, yes, Lord. He said, no, Steve, are you ready? Yes, Lord. Are you really ready? I said, three times. Kind of like Peter, because Peter had an attitude. I said, yes, Lord. He said, then feed my sheep. And then he spoke to me and he said, go to 1 Peter 3, 12 through 16. And then get back to me. Kind of tough, you know? It's like, okay, Lord. Communication just kind of stopped. Pretty abruptly. So, I finished my cup of coffee. And then I went to the scriptures. Read them for yourself, guys. A long time ago, he said, spoke to me and he said, if you stand for me, I'll stand for you. It's time, guys, that we step up to the plate. But we've got to have it in prayer, guys. It's got to be birthed in prayer. 5 a.m., time to weep and pray. Those true prayers, guys, okay? I'm reeling right now from the storm that some of it was self-created and self-inflicted. I was in God's perfect will, except for the fact that Stevie was doing it his way, not God's way. I didn't see it like that. It took me a long time, and the storm's gone, but the aftermath's still there. Some people that I was trying, a couple I was trying to help, I ended up hurting more than one person. And it's like, it wasn't intentional, but it became sin. Because I was in my way. I was in his way. Of what he wanted to do. I was in the perfect will. 90%. But look at that message I've got about what's your heading. Because that's what the enemy's doing. It plant that little seed, seemingly, to grow into some rotten fruit. In your life and the only way out of the you know it's like he's given us the keys to the kingdom and that key one of the keys the main key is the prayer because if you don't hear it from god jesus the holy ghost and his word it's of no effect Effectual fervent prayers. Time to just really, really weep and pray, guys. I'm not talking about the popcorn prayers. That hit the ceiling and don't, don't do anything. Or it's, you know, we bring our petitions to God. Well, you know, car, or house, whatever, you know, things we want. No. I'm not naive, neither is God. I can go and go somewhere this morning. I don't have gas in the car. I got a car to get there. You know, that's not what I'm saying. I want a nice car. And it's cold now in Texas, but in the summertime, it's hot. I want one that has air conditioning in the summer. But it's got to be birthed in prayer. We want. It's not about our country anymore, guys. It's about the land we live in. We want to stop all these phony mandates, false accusations, all this stuff. Man, guys, the abortion issue... Read mine about them poking the bear. Well, it's literally the tribe of the Lion of Ju Judah. It's time to pray, guys. Usher in what he wants to do in this land. Man, guys. The fear, the, you know, they want to lock you up. They want to lock down the country, try to do this and that, and just all these lies. And it's like, man, guys, I I'm just going to give you one brief example. Okay, 
mayor of New York sitting there, or not the mayor, but the, yeah, the mayor, I'm sorry, telling how he's gonna lock down the businesses if you don't take, take the shot. Okay, this all, when this very first started, that's why I put it out, guys, Mark of the Beast or the Mask of the Beast, and how it's just, you know, masks are mandatory. No, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, his word, or why? But look at it, guys, they're barking and barking and barking about this vaccine now. First, it was the masks. Well, some stupid idiot, honestly, I'm just going to be point blank. You know, you don't have to wear your mask in the shower if no one's home, da da da, but just some, you know. Okay, great. Where's theirs? All these people are barking, every single one of them, leaders and congressmen and presidents and different people of different countries and supposedly in the, in the, in the know and the knowledge and all this. Where's their mask at? And then what do you do with it when you're done? This is supposed to stop this Omicron or all this other crazy variants and goofy stuff. And where does it go after you're done with it? If it's that hazardous, and why aren't you wearing one? Even in public. Man, guys. You can cut through a lot of that if you just pray about it. You'll see the light. Even just in the natural, you can see the light. But it's just time, guys. For God's army to come forth. Joel's army. I'm not talking about strapping the AK-47 or AR-15 to your, to your behind with 300 rounds and storming someplace. That ain't gonna fly. That dog won't hunt, guys. I'm talking about picking up the sword of the Spirit in prayer, fasting, dedication, seeking the Lord. <sighs> Even in scriptures. You know, I could have, those scriptures, read them, guys. So they're very specific and point blank, and that's what the Lord does for me, and He'll do it for you too, and He wants to do it for all of His people. Maybe yours might not be, you know, that point specific, but it might be point specific of something he wants you to do. Because we're all a little different and there's a reason why he made us different. But follow the, follow the, follow the plan. What's God's plan in your life? You're not gonna get it. Why do you think you got one of these and two of these? Why does Jesus say a lot? He that had an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying unto the church. You're gonna get it straight from God Jesus, the Holy Ghost, lead, guide, direct you to all truths and come from here and this plan in the Word. Quit trying to badge people over the head with the Bible. Twisting it up to fit your needs to be your way and not His way. Man, guys, there's some messages that I'm taking literally a year before I put out in prayer. The one about abortion, how God sees American abortion. I got it a year before in a dream and in a vision and in prayer and couldn't put it out for a year. Because it wasn't in the way. I'm not perfect, guys. I, you know, air some. And like I said, I'm, you know, I'm reeling from the chastisement of the Lord right now in this storm. The, the storm's gone, but the aftermath is still there. I'm not trying to pick up the pieces. I'm praying about a lot of things in it. My wife was like, why are you doing all this? What do you, you know? I'm like, because I need to be alone with the Lord. And find out where Stevie kind of screwed up. And I'm bringing it to the Lord and repentance and prayer. And it's, you know, it's a little bit bloody and ugly even. Sometimes the, the truth, and when the truth is in us and in our lives, it's like, man, you know? Gotta come clean, guys. Time to clean up. Clean up on aisle 13. I was sitting, imagine that, guys, 18, no, 19, I'm sorry. Saved, set free. In an all black church for six years. Guys, 
me, white guy, and the walls. That was it. Every, everything else was black. Nobody else was black. I was just glad to be saved and set free. But this big old black preacher named Nathaniel Dorsey, I hope and pray he's still alive, but he was old, you know, in his 60s then, so I'm not sure if he's still alive. He'd be preaching a, a really strong message, guys. A lot of them are really good. And he'd be preaching. You don't like that page in the Bible? Tear it out! That's what many of us are doing. Or we're using our favorite scripture to, 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 to dog somebody. Did you pray about it? Was it birthed in prayer? Did you really bring it before the Lord? Or was it just your will, your way? What you wanted, uh, you know, Years ago, now they're cheap and they don't work. When I was a kid, I got a slinky and the TV ad showed it going down the steps and it actually did. Well, 25 years ago, one of my kids brought one to me and it was made in China apparently because it didn't do anything. Like it, like it said, cheap, junk, garbage. Brought to me, it had some toys tangled up in it, brought to me Get, you know, I'd fix it and untangle it and he'd go play with it and then bring it back to me five minutes later, same thing. Did it about three or four times. Finally, one time I was taking it apart and he was watching me, he just jerked it out of my hand. And I was like, okay, I did this. No one was gonna come back to me. Well, that's what God's doing to us. Unless if it's birthed in prayer, guys, the true prayer, it's about 5 a.m. Why do you think I put that out, guys? I got that in prayer, too. 5 a.m., time to pray and weep between the porch and the altar. Why? So you can get it for yourself. I'm not talking about listening to me on YouTube or some of the other favorite preachers or anybody else's opinions or brands or ministries or any of that. You and God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost and His Word. Weeping and praying, I'm talking about very, very, I'm talking about a little bit past sincere. I'm talking about really crying out to God for the truth. Because that's what he's doing for his people. So let's hear it. Let's hear your testimonies. Let's see, you know, we're all on this journey, guys. Some of us longer than others, relevant and irrelevant. We're all the same. I don't care if you live in the outhouse, under the outhouse, smell like the outhouse, penthouse, a white house, or any house. Your house needs to be a house of prayer. 5 a.m. is so important, guys, because it starts the day for one. It's giving your first fruits, too. All these are good, good, good. It's bringing to the Lord, and you know what? not YouTube on, there's not Facebook on, there's not your television on, there's not the media on, there's not the Bible on, and there's nothing going on but you and God. It's quiet. You don't have to turn on anything, any of the device. Living under the shadow of the Almighty, listening to what he has to say. That open line of communication Guys, it started at the very beginning. What did he want with Adam and Eve? Just to talk to him in the cool of the day. He wants to talk to you at the start of the day. And it's at five in the morning, guys. It doesn't have to be every day, but as often as you can. I'll see you there. It's very important that we all pray and seek him. And I'm not talking about play. I'm talking about pray. I'm not talking about if I put that message out, are you to pray or do you pray? Love you guys. Talk to you soon. 1 Peter 3, 12 through 16. Arise and shine, guys, for the glory of the Lord is upon you. Love you guys. See you soon.